What moves the heart of God? Helping people with their physical needs or helping them trust Christ as Savior? The next short video talks about that. At the end, I will also share my experience as a missionary. Watch this, you will be surprised. Luke 15 verse 1 through 7 starts off telling us about publicans and sinners who want to hear Christ. When it uses the word sinner, it doesn't at all mean that not everyone is a sinner. Of course, Romans 3.23 teaches us that all have sinned. We all come short of God's perfection required to enter heaven. The word sinner here refers to someone who is unclean. There are many ways to become unclean. It could be some disease, touching someone who is dying or even having a woman having a monthly period. Now the publicans were tax collectors. That doesn't mean that they were Democrats, just meant that they dealt with money which was unclean by itself because it had a picture of the Roman Caesar Tiberius displaying himself as being God. There's only one God. Watch this video about that. So just dealing with that kind of money makes one unclean. The Pharisees and scribes did not like that Christ would sit down with these unclean people and eat with them. In the Middle East, having food with someone relates to very close fellowship. So, eating with somebody could make you unclean. Now to learn more about the Pharisees, watch this video. As a response in Luke 15, Jesus teaches them three parables. Now the first parable is about the lost sheep, but it really should be called the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd had a hundred sheep. Now many times these shepherds lived in the high mountains and would go down the mountains towards the east where the desert was to herd their flocks. At night they would bring the sheep back home on top of the mountains into their sheep pen. As you can see in this photo, the sheep pen has an opening. The shepherd would sit there he became the door. Now remember, Jesus said that he was the door. The shepherd would have the sheep pass under his rod, a defense weapon about two feet long, and he would count the sheep as they fall into the sheep pen. So this shepherd in the parable noticed that one sheep was missing. He has 99 sheep. So he leaves the 99 in the sheep pen. He probably had someone sit in the door to guard the sheep. So he went down the mountains into the desert to search for the sheep. Now what would happen to a lost sheep? Generally they would find some hole in the rocks and lay down and just go bam, bam. I know that's not very good, but I'm really not a sheep. I'm a human. This is a very dangerous thing to do because a wild animal could hear the sheep, find it and kill it. So the shepherd had to find the sheep fast. So what does the shepherd do? He listens for the sheep and when he finds the sheep, he is very glad the sheep is alive. He puts his sheep on his shoulders and carries his sheep back. Now this is not an easy task. I carry the sheep myself. They weigh about 65 pounds. Remember, the shepherd had to carry the sheep back up the mountains to bring him to the sheep pen. Then the shepherd told his friends and neighbors to rejoice because the sheep was lost and now it is found. Jesus is telling the scribes and Pharisees to rejoice that people are found when they are trusting Christ as Savior. Jesus is telling them to rejoice over that because ultimately there is a feast in heaven over one sinner who repents. Now the word repent here is metanoia, which means to change your mind. For more information about repenting, check out this video on this. But remember, the sheep was never asked to stop wandering from the flock or anything like that. Now for the extra, I'm going to be honest. As a missionary, I've been very excited to see people trust Christ as Savior. Some believers, when I tell them about this, haven't thought this was a big deal even though there's a huge feast in heaven and actually in the heart of God. But when we as a ministry help a person with some physical problem, they were very excited about that. May I encourage everyone to really see the salvation of the lost as the highest calling that believers could have. I'm not saying that we shouldn't help people, but Jesus came to seek and save that which is lost. Luke 19 verse 10. 
which is a reference to Ezekiel 34, by the way. That's where God's heart truly is at. Remember, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross so that people can trust Christ as Savior and have eternal life. I hope this video is an encouragement to you to share the gospel. Thank you so much for watching this to the end. Many need to hear the gospel. You can be a huge part of that. Remember, share the video and SCLB smash the like button and go ahead, watch another video. God bless you. Bye-bye.